Our lesson today is entitled Call to Remember and is found in the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 26 verses 1 through 13. This is Sunday School lesson for April 14, 2019 and our key verse is found in the 13th verse of our lesson and it reads as follows, I tell you the truth that wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deeds will be remembered and discussed. Next slide. So the aim of this lesson is to contrast the deeds of the woman with the reactions of the disciples and appreciates the woman's display of love for Jesus and remember our call to share the good news of Jesus Christ despite resistance or Ridicule. This is my YouTube channel. Over 100 lessons in my archive. I ask if you would to hit the subscribe and the bell and you'll get these lessons automatically. Uh, the like button as well. Share these lessons and I love comments. They encourage me to continue to share God's word with you. Next slide. My, my lessons are always about the context and the content. We always do navigate our lesson verse by verse we use the international sunday school text as our backdrop we allow the holy spirit to guide us along this way next slide so each week i prepare some measure of background for this lesson which includes someone between 13 and 16 minutes or so that includes definitions terms theories history maps or places you always have the option to fast forward to that timetable if you don't need the background Next slide. Map. Um, Bethany. Bethany was a village in Judea about two miles uh, of Jerusalem. The distance considered a Sabbath day journey. Bethany was situated on the world travel road of Jericho. I'm highlighting the red marks on there to show you where Bethany is uh, with re in relationship to Jerusalem. Next slide. Term, son of man. Uh, the common understanding of the Son of God implies that Jesus' deity, which it does, and the Son of Man implies his humanity, which it does also. So the Son of Man, uh, that is a human being, he is also the Son of God, that he always existed, and is eternally begotten, uh, eternally and the only begotten Son who came forth from the Father forever. He always has, and he always will be, and he is the second person of the Trinity, with all the divine nature fully in him, he is verily man. And verily God again the son of man next slide alabaster box or jar of glass this alabaster was a stone that's what the stone is the alabaster that the oil is contained in it and it's a hard stone resembling the white marble referred to as one of the precious stones used in decoration of Solomon's temple uh, so the container used to carry the perfume oil that was made uh, of white a marble-like substance and the oil, ointment oil and perfumes were used uh, used to put in these vessels like alabaster were kept uh, pure and unspoiled and that was the purpose for using this particular stone. Next slide. Passover. So I shared with you this whole concept of Passover. Passover is an important biblical derived uh, Jewish festival. The Jewish people celebrated Passover as a commemoration, as a remembrance, again of their liberation by God from slavery in Egypt and their freedom as a nation under the leadership of Moses, it commemorates. Again, there's a remembrance. It's the story of Exodus as it's described in, in the Hebrew Bible, especially the book of Exodus in which the Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt. This big remembrance is a big concept of, of all of the um, feast days. Next slide. And I shared you again Passover, the uh, Jewish Passover related to the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. It was a time of remembrance, this Thanksgiving, this commemorating. And all of them were all about these commemorating, remembering the, the events that came over. Where here the death angel passed over those, uh, the, those firstborn and, uh, and they were spared uh, from this uh, death angel. Uh, and thus they painted the doorposts. And the death angel did not affect them. Again, these are those commemorations. These are the remembrances that God has for his people as well. Next slide. 
Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priesthood began with Aaron, which is Moses' brother, found in Exodus. And Aaron the Sidon served as priests in Israel, ministering in the tabernacle and later in the temple. Um, the tabernacle was in the wilderness, and then Solomon built that temple. There were primary as mediators between man and God. The Levitical priest bore the responsibility of offering the sacrifices required by this Mosaic law. Next slide. The high priest. The high priest was a, a high position among the Israelites in the Old Testament. The, chief, the term chief priest and high priest are sometimes uh, synonymous. They're interchangeable. These chief priests mentioned in Matthew are high ranking members of the priesthood who also serve in, in the Sanhedrin. I'll share with the Sanhedrin in a second. This is the garb that these high priests wore to differentiate who they were. Next slide. This whole Sanhedrin, that's the Supreme Court, like our Supreme Court, is patterned after that Supreme Court in ancient Israel, made up of 70 men and the high priests in the second temple period, which is that was a period after the Solomon's temple and Herod's temple. They met in the temple of Jerusalem. The Sanhedrin, as a body, claimed powers the lesser courts didn't have, and they're the ones who answered all the questions that were put in according to law, similar to our, high, our, our Supreme Court. Uh, as well. Next slide. These Pharisees, there are members, there were these mostly middle class businessmen who were in contact with the common man. They held much high esteem uh, by the common man. They were different than the Sadducees. There were also the Sadducees and the Pharisees were both of these. The, the, the Pharisees, they were held a minority position uh, in this whole Sanhedrin in this uh, Supreme Court. Uh, they held a higher position than those Sadducees, but they also they had the support of the people. That's why they were relevant because the people knew who they were, and the Sadducees were were not as prominent. Next slide. This whole uh, leper leprosy is a chronic uh, infectious disease. It primarily affects the peripheral nerves, the skin, upper respiratory tract, eyes, and uh, nasal muscles. And we saw that in all of the Old Testament, this disease does not have a cure, and Jesus healed many people who had leprosy. Next slide. Another term, crucifix, crucified or crucifixion, it was a method of torture. Not just putting someone to death, it was particularly a cruel and unusual form of disposing of people, that it was about the punishment component to it. So the person being crucified, nailed to a cross, would have... Uh, continually uh, attempt to reposition the body up and down to keep breathing, that they were paced on that pedestal and they were nailed to this cross and the only way they can they could breathe is by going up and down and moving their body up and down. And one of the possible causes of death uh, was your heart ruptures or your heart stops pumping or you die from asphyxiation, asphyxia, when you can't breathe anymore because you don't have the energy to continue to lift your body up and down. This is a common method that the Romans used to kill people. Next slide. Summary of the book of Matthew. Well, I used this about five or six times at least that this Jesus of Nazareth was indeed the long awaited Messiah, the King of the Jews, as foretold, foretold by the ancient, ancient Jewish prophets. He came to reveal how to enter the kingdom of heaven. His purpose, it is very obvious that the Gospel of Matthew was written for the purpose of revealing that the, the man, Jesus of Nazareth, was actually the King of the Jews, the long-awaited Messiah, the sovereign Lord Jehovah who came from heaven to this world, revealing to mankind the kingdom of heaven. This King of the Jews, this Messiah, Jesus filled every prophecy that was spoken about him in the Old Testament. The prophecies had spoken of this kingdom that the Messiah would bring would be a spiritual kingdom and that would never be destroyed. Again, this is a summary of the book of Matthew. So, setting of our lesson today, I'm trying to go fast so we can get into our lesson today, that it begins, I'm trying to give you, a, leads us up to our lesson from Matthew 21 through 26, about five chapters, that there was a triumphant entry of Jesus. We came on the donkey, entered into the city, and Jesus only enters into that temple, the temple, um, uh, Solomon's temple, I mean, Herod's temple in the, uh, in Jerusalem. And there he 
He turns over the money changers. He drives off those vendors. He says that they're turned his father's house into a temple, a, a, a den of thieves. Uh, that's found in Matthew 21. There's a blind uh, and a lame man came to him in Matthew 21 and 14. Obviously, he healed them as well. He was teaching daily in the temple. There's a story of a fig tree that Jesus sees this fig tree that doesn't bear fruit in the ice. He cursed that tree. I'll get to that in a bit. That's Matthew 21, the parable of the Great Supper. We're here. He has these people. He invites them to this Great Supper. And the people have all these excuses that they can't come to this this supper and then ultimately he go he sends out to the highways and to the byways and he grabs the the poor and the lame and he, he the regular people and that's emblematic of, of jesus having this uh, message of of uh, of of this um this uh, salvation was first for the jewish people and they didn't come so ultimately he goes out to the gentiles to the less than and then we go to this testing of the Pharisees. We find in Matthew 22, where there they talk about this. Uh, they show them these coins, and they said, "Who, you know, the, um, about this?" Um, and Jesus tells them that whose name is whose picture's on it. He says, "Render to Caesar what is Caesar." And then he's tested in, in Matthew 22 as well by the Sadducees, and the Sadducees concoct this crazy story about this uh, widow and her. And their husband and the children and then if she married all these guys and who should be married and in the resurrection and jesus said they're going to marry and giving them merit in the resurrection and then they also they try to get them you know, with a, a real lawyer someone who's real uh staunch in the law in matthew 22 33 34 through 40 and then they try to get jesus to say okay well which one of these uh um, uh, commandments is the greatest commandment and jesus says that that the greatest commandment is in love and and then maybe and then he's recognizing me being aware of these scribes and pharisees in chapter 23 and then he foretells the destruction of the temple he says in three days it's going to be destroyed that happens in 70 a.d but he was talking about himself that in three days that he is going to resurrect himself and he saw the city saw jerusalem and he saw the the, the the events that have come uh, that have happened in what history and, and and now he weeps over over Jerusalem and there's a parable of the ten virgins and the ten talents and the ten virgins they need to have the oil so that they can have the oil and that's that's emblematic of having this uh, connection with Jesus so that you can so when the door closes that you'll have the salvation we talk about the talents we talk about the sheep and the goat and the sheep and the goat where there's going to be a time where where at the end of days where there'll be a s separation of those believers and non-believers or sheep and the goat and then ultimately where we are in our lesson today is matthew 26 where there is this woman who anoints jesus with all of these are the settings that leads us up to our lesson today next slide so that's 12 minutes and 42 seconds of background. Now to our Sunday school lesson. Amen. So Sunday school lesson is entitled "Call to Remember." It's found in Matthew 26, 1 through 13. We began with verse 1, and when Jesus had finished saying all these things. So when I read this, you know, obviously I think that the first thing is said, okay, he finished saying all with things. He said to his disciples, Jesus speaking. To his disciples and and after all of these things again this matthew it's about this kingdom to come but but here jesus you know you read it and you mesmerize what are these all these things next slide so all of these things are what i just shared with you <coughs> that leads us up to the story about this parable that great supper and the testing the pharisees and the sadducees and the lawyer and the scribes and pharisees who are after jesus and then he foretells of this destruction of the temple and, and how he wept and the virgins and the sheep and they go these are the things that that were occur right up to this point that jesus is now speaking to the disciples in our lesson today next one so sunday school lesson call to remember matthew 26 and verse 2 Again, Jesus speaking, he says, as you know, the Passover begins in two days. And the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. And we know that Jesus is the Son of Man. Passover, we shared that with you in the, in the definitions. That is this 
this memorial event that occurs when some almost two million, two to three million people come into Jerusalem. They make this annual pilgrimage into Jerusalem. This this time of remembrance of that Passover event that happened, and when they left Egypt, they they all come into the city, and they're, and, they're, and Jesus will ultimately be that Passover Lamb that will be slain. That, that again, He is the Son of Man, verily God and verily man, the one who will come and be the sin sacrifice for all men, and will be handed over and crucified. And I share with you the crucifixion was this horrible method of killing folks that the Romans did. Now I'll share with you also what happens in this same day, and that what happens I share with you before, that when one of the events that occurred up into this leading was Jesus saw the fig tree, and, and he saw the fig tree that didn't bear any root, and he cursed the, the fig tree, and then now we find him Mark 11, 20 through 21, that it was a morning that he passed and he saw the fig tree he dried up from its roots. And Peter is calling the remembrance again, this whole concept of remembrance. And he said to the master, Behold, the fig tree which thou curses withered away. Again, this is fulfillment of the prophecy that Jesus has said that, that he cursed the tree and they see the results from the cursing this tree. This is, happens the same moment that. Of the same morning that this event that Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Next slide. So this is recognized that it is a Wednesday, Wednesday morning, just two days before this Passover. This Passover, this period of time that I shared with you when, when the sojourning folks would all come into Jerusalem. It was just before this big Passover, Passover feast. And Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the, to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love that he would openly become sin sacrifice for all mankind. He would lay down his life for our sinners. Next slide. Sunday school lesson call to remember Matthew 26 verses 3 and four and at the same time so here's jesus is in in uh meeting with his with his uh, disciples and at the same time while he's meeting these these priests and elders those people i show you the scribes and pharisees and sadducees and those the sanhedrin and all those they, they were they were meeting at the residence of caiaphas and, and i share with you in the second who caiaphas says he's the high priest i showed you before who the high priest was. He was one who was called from the other priests to be that one high priest. Typically, they came from the lineage of, of, of Aaron. They plotting to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. The two things that I want to share with you in these next two slides. Next slide. So this Caiaphas, he was the high priest. And in the time of, uh, there were two high priests in this time of Jesus that were mentioned during Jesus' public ministry. That was Annas that we find in our lesson, or we find in this, uh, in the, the story that as we get closer to this, um, the, uh, the death of Jesus, there was uh, Annas and Caiaphas. And the priests were not taken from, these priests were not taken from the lineage uh, of Aaron because there was a deal made with the Maccabees and they put in puppet priests because they were trying to control the Jewish people. They were political appointees appointed by Rome and the high priests were not, were taken, uh, the high priest was taken from the Sadducees. This figure prominently uh, into the events of, uh, lead to the events of Jesus' death. And Annas had been the high priest uh, from uh, six, uh, 86 to 815 and the Roman had removed him uh, from the office, but yet he still yielded uh, considerable power behind the scenes, and we'll see that in the, if you when we get to the crucifixion story and the and the story when he's he's given up to uh, to the political leaders in order to 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 um, be judged, and five of his sons succeeded him as, as high priest, and he was a father-in-law of Caiaphas, as Annas was, and the high priest who was at the awesome time of of Jesus' ministry, Caiaphas was that high priest at the time. His, his father-in-law was Annas before him. Next slide. Again, political appointees, not truly to that lineage of Aaron. Next slide. 
and uh, Jesus had this issue with those Pharisees. They wanted him dead. And one of the main reasons that Jesus wanted him dead, because he was challenging their power and authority. And then we find in Matthew 23 that Jesus speaks angry about these, these, um, these uh, religious leaders. That they now lead the beginning of these seven woes that Jesus has, began about their misdeeds of these Pharisees. And we start in verse 13 uh, of the first uh, seven of these woes that Jesus charged these, these teachers and the Pharisees uh, uh, with different wrongdoings. And all these began with Jesus saying, woe unto you, you teachers of the law, and you Pharisees, you hypocrites. That's all those scribes and Pharisees and Sanhedrin, they need to, they're all He's calling them out with the exception of the woe begins of woe unto you blind guys. But he says to them that that, that you neither uh, allow yourselves or those to enter in heaven because you're blocking people from entering heaven because you're not pointing yourself, you're not pointing the people to God, you point them to yourselves. That, that you said there's going to be a greater condemnation is going to be upon you guys because of your disobedience, because of your cruelty, of, against your, your hypocrisy. And you'll never be satisfied because of your greedy. And he says you're merciless. You have corrupt hearts. You cannot fool. You cannot fool God with your good works. So you can do good works, but God knows what's going on to you. That you sons, you're murderers. You sons, you're murderers of the prophets and who kill the prophets. And and and, and Jesus calls out these these uh, these religious leaders. And they don't like the fact that Jesus calls them out. And I shared with you before that happened earlier that he turned over the money chain, money tables as well. So causing them to have a loss of financial gain. So they were not happy with Jesus and they wanted him dead. Next slide. Sunday school lesson call to remember in verse 5. But not during the Passover. So these religious leaders say we want him dead but we can't do it from the passover celebration and they agreed or the people may riot and we know that they would uh, riot because remember jesus fed the five thousand and the four thousand and people were following everywhere he went and they plot to capture jesus secretly and kill him because he's a threat to their power to their authority and to their finances as well and, and they decided to do it not on passover next one Sunday school lesson call to remember verses six and seven. Meanwhile, again, there's meanwhile, Jesus, there's a stage change. It was Jesus speaking. Now those guys were, 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 were plotting. And now verse six, it mean, meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany. And I share with you, Bethany was just a couple miles from Jerusalem at the home of Simon, a man who had, had previously had leprosy. So again, I share with you, leprosy was a disease that was incurable. So obviously this is someone who Jesus had cured, right? Just by deduction, we can understand that. And while he was eating it, a woman came with a beautiful alabaster jar. And I share with you the alabaster before and this expensive perfume that was contained in this jar. And she poured it over his head. Next slide. So last week I shared with you this slide here and it was um, called to mission and it was in uh, Matthew chapter 10 that Jesus had told these disciples <clears throat> when they went forth on their missions that whenever you went into a city, search for a worthy person that stay in his home. And here is Jesus at the house of this, this leper. And obviously he must be a worthy person because and he must be someone who's, who's, uh, who's worthy because uh, he's probably someone that Jesus had already healed, and, and he was probably very grateful and why he invited Jesus to stay in his home. Stay in the home until you leave, and when you enter the house, give it your blessing. And I share with you this blessing last time, and probably no doubt Jesus performed some blessing of that house because he gave the disciples the same kind of instruction that, 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 that again, I, I share with you that I said last week that this, may this home be blessed. May good fortune follow those who pass through this door, safe journeys for those who go forth, and safe heart for those who enter. And may this floor lighten the steps of all who tread upon it surface, and may it also provide a stable place to stand. And, and may these walls soak up in the rich sounds of laughter and loving, uh, and loving hung with 
art and memories and protection from the finest winds. And may the roof hold strong and may these roots sink deep in this home, a place of safety, a joy, a place of rest and create a place for me. And may this home be blessed. And there's many of these blessings that you can find throughout the, you know, the, the Internet as well. But this is just one that I share with you. And maybe Jesus gave this house a blessing as well as he stayed in the house of this worthy person. Next slide. Sunday school lesson is called to remember Matthew 26, verses 8 and 9. And verse 8, and the disciples were indignant about this whole oil pouring on his head. And we saw this. What a waste, they said. It could be sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. And there's this woman. And here she is, and she's pouring this oil on Jesus' head, and, 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 and these, these disciples are indignant. And this word indignant is a feeling characterized by expressing this strong displeasure or something they're considered unjust or offensive or insulting that, that, that here I share with you that the response of these disciples, and the disciples that saw that they were indignant, they were displeased, and they're, why this waste? This perfume could have sold at a high price. The oil she put on his head was worth a year's wages. And the money could have been given to the poor. And again, she has saved this oil, no doubt, for an important event. And, and she's willing to do what she wants with her own oil. That they don't have the opportunity to dictate what she does with it. She does something that she thinks is special. And it is an special event to remember, to be to be remembered. Next slide. Sunday school lesson call to remember Matthew 26 verses 10 and 11. But Jesus, aware of this, what these disciples are saying, that he's aware of, a, of the conversation these disciples are having, and why criticize what Jesus says, why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? Why are you guys mad because she's doing it to me? Verse 11, you will always have poor among you, but you will not always have me. And Jesus had told them before that he was going to go to this cross, that he was going to be a uh, sin sacrifice for man. But here he says that, why are you criticizing this woman for doing this, such a great thing? So I share with you two more cells that hope help to clarify this concept. Next slide. That she has compassion and she has love and respect for Jesus again, that she has obviously made the money and she's she bought the oil and she was saving for a moment, a memorous event and she's now pouring this ointment upon the head of Jesus Christ as a token of the highest respect and where there is true love in the heart of Jesus Christ, nothing will be thought too good to bestow upon him. That she didn't believe that nothing that she did was too good to bestow upon him for who he is and what he has done. And again, his ministry is moving in the last three and a half years and amazing things that he has done. And the, the Christ servants are grumbling and, they, and the, more he, they, the more he manifests his acceptance. This act of faith and love was so remarkable that it would be reported as a memorial of Mary's faith and love. Now, some places in the text, they just call her the woman, and some places they call her Mary. So we'll use Mary at this point, her faith and love for all the ages and all the places where the gospel should be preached. This was a fulfilled prophecy that this woman had done this amazing feat, this amazing act of love. And respect for Jesus. Next slide. And Jesus is, is leaving this earth soon. And the poor will always be there, even till he comes again. And the justification of this good, this physical, this moral, this beautiful act that she does of particular circumstances in which she's anointing, this anointing took place. So Jesus was on the very threshold of his death. This is a Wednesday. And he's dying on, they're going to be crucified on, 
on, on Friday. And they would always have opportunities to show loving kindness to the poor. But by and by, it will be no longer in their power to do a loving service to, to Jesus. In person. On the earth. Because he would become crucified and become sin sacrifice for all mankind and go back to the Father once he came. And accordingly, there's a moral propriety in making a special manifestation of love, which was possible only now. That this can only happen now, it can't happen later after he's gone. And it takes presence of the general one, which could always be possible. That he could always do it for the poor, could always be there. But Jesus was leaving. <coughs> Jesus was leaving earth sin, and the poor will always be here, even till he comes again. Next one. Sunday school lesson call to remember Matthew 26 and verse 12. And she has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. And Jesus is speaking to his disciples here in verse 12. That that's what you recognize that is being said that or he is speaking to disciples and he's telling these 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 gentlemen these these disciples this, this 12 that that she's poured this perfume on me prepare my body for burial and we know in all cultures around the world that world that preparation of a deceased body can be carried out in many forms and there would be an option to satisfy the needs that meet any religious or personal beliefs and, 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 and that's what there was happening right here in this, in the time of Jesus, that they did things differently. And, and, and now she's anointing him with this oil prior to his burial as an anointing of his body. Two more slides to help you to understand this concept. Next slide. That three times in Matthew, he told them, he told these disciples that he would die. We find in Matthew 16 and 21 that from the time on Jesus began to explain to his disciples that, that he must go to Jerusalem to suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life, Matthew 16 and 21. And when he came together in Galilee, he said to them that the Son of Man, again him, is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. And they will kill him, and on the third day will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief, Matthew 17, 22 through 23. And, and again, and now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. They took the 12 disciples aside and said to them, We are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and they will condemn him to death, and will turn him over to the Gentiles, and we mocked and flogged and crucified. And on the third day, he'll be raised to life, Matthew 20, 17 through 19. Again, Jesus had told these disciples three times that he would soon die. Next slide. And we know the story about this whole anointing process. And, and again, with the women who came to, after Jesus' crucifixion, that the main reason the body was anointed with spices was to control the smell of that de decomposition. The Jews did not practice embalming like the Egyptians did. And the funeral spices were ways to minimize these unpleasant odors. In the tomb of Lazarus, when Jesus asked the stone to be rolled away from the mouth of the tomb, that Martha objected by the time there was a bad odor for some to be seen after he's been in this ground for four days, and the spicy women brought to Jesus' tomb were intended to eliminate such an odor, the body, to honor the body of Christ. So this anointing was a process that one would do prior to burial. Next slide. Sunday school lesson call to remember in verse 13. And this is our last verse of our text today. We're moving to the closing of this lesson, and I tell you the truth. Whenever the good news is preached, again, Jesus is speaking, the good, the good news is preached throughout the world. This woman, this one, Mary, this woman's deeds will be remembered and discussed. That this act, this selfish, selfish act, this act of compassion, this act of love, this act of joy, this act of sharing 
will be remembered and discussed in perpetuity. Again, 2,000 years ago, this occurred and we're talking about it today in our lesson. Today, as this news is preached throughout this world, again, her deeds will be remembered. Again, our lesson is called to remember. Next slide. Matthew, so I'll provide you a summary of these first 13 verses that she is remembered. That is this whole, uh, this whole thing that this woman is remembered, that in this chapter, the focus is not on the teachings of Jesus, that those events have happened over the last three and a half years of his ministry, and now his hour has come. The fullness of time is here, and now the focus shifts to the preparation of Jesus' arrest and death. And Jesus, again, he speaks to the disciples about what's going to happen. We saw, saw in verses 1 and 2. They don't, even re, they don't even recognize that he told them three times in the recent days that what's going to happen, that he's someone's going to die. And he will not be the king of the Jews who will deliver God's chosen people from the, their occupation in this Roman Empire. That's what they wanted him to be. And that's not what his thing was. He was not the king of the Jews who was going to, going to put them into this right position. That he had a greater mission. And now the rulers began to plot his arrest, this arrest of Jesus son, in verse 3 to 5. They cannot stand his popularity or the message of love and inclusion of all of God's people. That, that, that his message is not just to the Jews, it's to the Gentiles, it's to the, the, those who are sick and those who, who have diseases and those who, who, are, who are cursed and those who are demon-possessed and all. And, and, and now Jesus is, you know, and those, those widowers and tax collectors and, 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 those, and those prostitutes, that, that his, his inclusion of all the people who he provides salvation for. That he has become the, the sin sacrifice for all of God's people. The whosoever's as well. And now this woman anoints Jesus in preparation for his sufferings and his death. We find in verses 6 to 13. And the disciples are not even sensitive to what is about to happen. The Redeemer of mankind has come into the world to restore man's relationship with Almighty God. That, that, that relationship was broken when the sin, Adam's sin came and came and, 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 and rest upon all mankind. As God's very word became flesh and dwell among us, we beheld the glory of the Lord, the God of the Father, full of grace and truth. And, and this Jesus, God's promise, that Genesis 3.15 promise that Messiah was going to come to take away the sins of the world is now here. And this is the most significant event in human history that's about to happen. And what follows in verse 13, after verse 13, is Judas. One of those disciples, the one who kept the money, the one of them that they were all worried about, that this woman is anointing with this oil that is that is so precious, that is a whole year's salary, that they all are, are upset about it. That Judas meets with the, those rulers and he arranges the delivery of Jesus to them. We find it 14 through 16. And he gets 30 pieces of silver for this act that he does of betrayal. And things come to a head and, and, and the... The events align forward, and, and this is a significant event. The Son of Man will be crucified and will raise again. Just like he said, and that he told the, these disciples many times before. And with this all, Jesus requires us to remember him as well. Again, she's remembered, but we also have a, a need to remember him as well. Next slide. And we are called to remember Jesus for those remember miracles that he did. Those are the things that we can internalize and recognize who he is and why he's so amazing and, and that he is our Messiah, that, that he changed the water into wine. We saw that as the first miracle. And he, he, he made that great miracle when they threw the, the nets on the other side and he made a great hall and he, and he cast out unclean spirits that these are the miracles. These are the things we remember Jesus for, that these amazing acts and how he, how he, how he cured Peter's mother-in-law from this fever and how he healed these lepers and he, and he took things, people who could be, would never ever be healed, that they lived their life of, of solitude because of the, the problems that are going on in their body. And he healed the centurion servant and he did it in a in distance that he didn't have to be present to do it. And he and he raised the widow's son to death and, and he healed and he fed the 4,000, he fed the 5,000, he even raised Lazarus from the death and there's many other miracles that he did that we are called to remember those things about our Messiah Jesus. We're called to remember this woman, but we're also called to remember Jesus. Next slide. 
We're called to remember his authority, that this Jesus, that this son of God, this son of man, this that he had the power and authority to, to calm storms and nature obeyed him, that the demons, that those demons who fell and they thought they had power, but he has more power over those demons that he could cast out demons from anybody. That he cured a paralytic man, that, that people are born with illness and, and, and problems in their body from birth, that Jesus could turn that all around and, and he raised the, 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 the ruler's daughter from that. The death does not not the end of life for, for Jesus, that he cured this woman's issue of blood, that only thing she had to do was just touch his hem of his garment and she would be she would be healed, that the power is even in just in his hem that he, he loosed the tongue of a man who could speak and could not speak and he healed a man who was invalid for 38 years. That time and the lack of time or the amount of time that one person has been in, in some infirmity, that that was not something that Jesus could not overcome, that, that, that again, he could he could heal the, the, the someone who had been in for 38 years. That we're called to remember his authority. We're called to remember his power. We're called to remember his love. We call to remember him as being the one who is our Messiah. That he's the one who came into the world to become sin sacrifice to man and the one who's to bring us back in relationship with Almighty God. Next. That after there is a great supper. That after these events that happen that we share here in chapter 26, that there was a there was a last supper that Jesus willfully and obediently allowed himself to be brutally sacrificed on this wooden cross. That he meets with these people, these disciples, and he has this supper and he tells them about what's going to happen. And, and he did not uh, reconcile, they did this to reconcile each of us to God by paying the debt for our sins, which we could never do on our own because. He had to be all God. He had to be the Son of Man, all man and all God. In return, Jesus makes a simple request. For us to remember this act that he performed on our behalf. Jesus did not have to die for us. However, because he values every life on earth, he wants to see us sitting at his dining table someday in heaven, just like he did with these twelve. Throughout the Bible, throughout history, the truth of Christ's message has been established that we can join Jesus in heaven by acknowledging his sacrifice and accepting him into our life. In addition, we can apply the lesson Jesus taught at the Last Supper to live faith, a faithful life while here on earth, serving others with love, remembering him that this bread is a symbol of the body of Jesus, never to be forgotten as it was given to us. The cup represents the blood of Jesus, never to be forgotten. Again, this remembrance, he poured out his life for us, that Jesus offered everybody this gift of life, death, and resurrection. The last reminds us that Jesus' sacrifice, of Jesus' sacrifice, and that by faith in him, we can dine with Christ for all eternity and that is this whole gospel message and that is this whole call to remember. Next one. And he says in our communion to remember this and do this in remembrance of him. The next one. And that is our Sunday school lesson for this week called to remember Matthew 26, 1 through 13. It is called to remember. We're called to remember this woman. We're called to remember Jesus. My prayer for you is something you've learned today is strengthen your faith that the Lord provides all of your needs. You've learned something worthy of sharing and you enjoy learning about being called to remember. And you're encouraged to learn with us. And hit the subscribe button and the bell. You get these lessons automatically. I share with you benediction as always. Heavenly Father, send us out with confidence in the world to tell the world of your saving acts to bring glory to your name is the name of your son Jesus who was we should remember for all of his amazing acts in his name we do pray and ask these things always amen thanks so much for your time